now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One. A staggering shock. Another strange world. And we can't find people anywhere on it. Nobody around anywhere. Nothing but machines. Get your cat off my back immediately. Cats make me sneeze. Pardon me, you're leaning on my speaker, but that's better. Thank you. Oh, gosh, they talk. And they feel things, too. Heaven save us. What kind of machines can these be? My dear young humans, there is absolutely no reason to be alarmed. Naturally, we feel and speak. We also see and hear. Why ever should we not? We are of the highest intelligence. What is this? They're talking to us. You think they heard us calling? Impossible. They didn't answer us. Of course we heard you. What a racket you made. But you must recall, young man, you were shouting for people, creatures like yourselves. We are not people. You see, my dears, we're the family think of it. A family of living machines. I'm Popovic. I specialize in mathematical problems. I must admit, though it sounds immodest, I'm an absolute whiz at numbers. And this dear machine by my side is my mate, Momovic. I am an expert in maps and diagrams. I can make a map of anything in existence. But now you must meet our son, Baby Vec. He's young yet, of course, but he shows great promise. I'm a combination machine. I can already make maps and diagrams like Mama Vec. And I'm also a whiz at numbers like Papa Vec. When I grow up, I shall be the most intelligent machine in all of Technovec. Technovec is the name of this land. It is inhabited entirely by living machines. But that's impossible. We're all the people, people who run the machines. There are no people. We don't need them. We take care of ourselves. You must be lying. Machines can't take care of themselves. It takes humans to build and make them go. Not on Technovec. We are not like machines on Earth. On Technovec, we live and grow. We have feelings and thoughts. We are not run by people. But if there aren't any people here, we're in terrible trouble. <laughs> What do you mean, my dear? Please, don't cry. There, there. Tell me all about it. We're lost, you see. We need people to tell us the way home. Oh, the poor little humans. They're lost and want to go home. Well, of course they're lost, dear. What can you expect from humans? No, they can't help it. Dear. After all, humans aren't as intelligent as we are. Well, if they had even the tiniest amount of sense, they'd stop looking for humans and come to us for help. But of course, they wouldn't think of it. They don't trust us. That Mama Vec machine is right. I don't trust them one bit. I don't either. Oh, if only there were people here. There's something funny about this. Living machines? Machines can't run without people. They don't have any brains. But Eleanor, the little one, he cried. I didn't know machines could cry. They can't cry. It's impossible. If you ask me, I think it's a trick. A trick? What kind of a trick? Well, I don't think they're real machines. I bet, I bet they got people inside. Working the lights and the dials. And making the voices. That's it. I'm sure you're right, Willie. It explains everything. But why would they do it? What's the point? I'm going to find out. Give me that screwdriver. Hey! What are you doing, Edgar? I'm going to unscrew them and see who's inside. Smart idea, Edgar. You'll catch them in the act. Look who's coming back. Well, family Thinkovec, we find what you say about yourselves very interesting. So interesting that we want to do a little checking. Oh, my goodness. We want to examine you more closely. Put that screwdriver away, young man. Popovec. I think he really means it. Young man, don't touch us with that. Wow. Quiet down, baby. Vic. You could hurt us all very badly. Yourself included. You're making a big mistake. We were about to give you directions home. Edgar, did you hear that? 
I know you're in here. Where are you? To be continued. Next time, Mamavec makes an offer. It's time to tell a story. It's storytelling time. I'm Bill Withers, and uh, I'm a singer and a songwriter and a record producer for my own pleasure, and incidentally, that's the way I make my living. I was born in a place called Slab Fork, West Virginia. I lived there till I was maybe three or four years old. When I was a little boy, there were always a lot of rocks around, because I come from the uh, coal mining country. And uh, there were a lot of exposed rocks around because somebody was always digging in the ground in one form or another. Uh, one of the ways that uh, seemed to get rid of some of the excess energy that we had as little boys was we would just uh, throw rocks at, at anything, at uh, birds, although uh, none, uh, none of us ever hit any. I don't think we ever expected to hit any. I got into music mostly from watching other people sing and uh, thinking, well, if they can sing, probably I can sing too. Music to me is primarily a way of uh, saying things to large groups of people, which I've never had the opportunity to do before, and also to uh, entertain, I guess. I think uh, hobbies can help you to build a, a work ethic. In a way, the way that I make my living is a hobby. So I think hobbies is a, a nice way to ease into the work responsibilities that will come later in your life. Hi, I'm Bill. How are you doing? Oh, hi there. Nice Good. Dan. Yeah, let me swing around there. All right. Ooh. Yeah, how long have you been driving this? Oh, a good five years now. Yeah. Uh, can I ride back down with you? Are you going to be uh, going back pretty soon? Yeah, it'll be about 15 or 20 minutes. We already ride back. Yeah, we'll hang out if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, my grandmother used to tell me about riding on the uh, trolley. You know, we didn't have any trolleys down where I come from. I come from coal mining country. She used to tell me about a lot of things. Uh, uh, cities like uh, New York, you know, and uh, riding on the uh subway and going down south on the train mm -hmm. yeah i liked her in fact i uh, made up this song about her you know we got a while maybe i'll sing his song okay? all right if you can stand it i can't try. sing too good but i'm sorry <laughs> in church on Sunday morning, Grandma's hand played a tambourine so well, Grandma's hand used to issue out a warning, she'd say, Billy don't you run so fast, might fall on a piece of glass, might be snakes there in that grass, Grandma's hand. Used to hand me piece of candy, Grandma's hand. Pick me up each time I fell, Grandma's hands. Boy, they really came in handy. She'd say, Matty, don't you whip that boy. What you wanna spank him for? He didn't drop no apple core, but I don't have Grandma in. If I get to heaven, I'll look for Grandma's hand. That's the kind of grandmother I have. We gotta go, huh? Oh, yeah. Time to go. Why?
Most of the people made things they needed for their daily lives, like clothing and soap. Well, Aunt Erie has taught us how to make some of these things, like doormats from dried corn shucks. I think she has a peacefulness up here that just comes through and you feel like you're at home. Well, I know that's what you say. Oh, but I made a many one, honey. You just have to learn. That's a, that's a lot of my life to show people how to do things. I've always done that. Yeah. Now, it don't never, don't never feel to ask me to do anything that I can do. I'll show you, any of you, to do anything I can show you. Hit this, my soul's delight. Put through there. From here? Right, right. When you come in, she asks you to sit down on the bed, and, and she'll laugh and all, and she'll put her hand on your knee and start smiling. She'll slap you around a little. Not hard at all, just love taps. Oh, my goodness. She wanted to talk to us, and she liked us. And ever since then, we've gone back. Last time we were there, we brought in her wood from the wood pile and, and sometimes draw her water. We just whatever needs to be done, because she won't ask you to do anything. She's just that type of person. She said she hadn't cooked anything for herself in about two weeks. She'd just been eating things that she had around. So we thought about cooking her something. We cooked cornbread, peaches, cabbage, sausage, potatoes, and peas. Through the valleys and the hills, I can see the people stirring. Some of you folks turn, thanks. Lord, we thank, thee, we thank Thee for this food, for what we're about to eat, and we thank Thee for friends and the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you know what she's come for, except yourself. Aunt Erie is so trusting with everybody. She just makes you feel like you want to be yourself. Like, I find myself talking to my grandmother a lot more than I used to, and understanding her ways a lot more. Well... I had a long legs in and as stout as a mule, go galloping wherever, anywhere to do anything in the world. But since I've got like I am now, I can't do it. I'm now 88. That's been that long. You got spring fever, Aunt Harry. <laughs> you remember me forever, won't you? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. My name is Julia Scissor. And my name is Rubberhead. I can cut a piece of paper. I can draw on it with lead. I'm happy when I'm sappy. I'm fine for any line. If you learn the way to use it. You can have a real good time, rub-a-dub-dub. What's that, Ruler? It's my new instant-on remote control solid-state portable TV with stereophonic sound, twin antenna color control, and a real beauty. An extra fine, fine tuning. I'll just plug it in and... Bing. You must have blown a fuse. No power. No lights. No TV. No kidding. There we are. We were powerless, Mr. Emeritus. With nothing to do. Not at all. You could have pretended you were early immigrants to America. They had no electricity, but lots of things to keep them busy. Early immigrants? They lived in this country about 350 years ago in houses very different from what we see today. What did they look like? They looked like that. It's a log house. With a fireplace. And a thatched roof. Can we make one, Mr. Emeritus? We can try, but it's not easy. First, this pattern. Are you ready, Rubberhead? Up and at them. 
Draw a box two inches high, divide it like this, you'll see why. Two of them. Right! And then add the half-inch flap again. Make two triangles over here, cut it out. Are you finished? There. On corrugated cardboard, place our shape. Outline. Cut away. Fold and tape. Now fold the edges of a paper bag. Cut it open, make fringes. And not a snag. Adjust the size, staple to the roof, overlap another without a goof. When we get to the center of the roof, you switch. Do it again without a hitch. Take a piece of cardboard, cut and fold. Here's our chimney. Good as gold. Open the door. Won't you rest a while? Here's our house. Early, Early immigrant, immigrant style. style. Pretend that you lived here centuries ago. There'd be no TV. Or radio. As an early immigrant, you would have found yourself using things which were right around. They were quick to learn to cut out logs with a two-handled saw, make maple sugar, carve out a boat, to smoke meat, churn milk, make candles and soap, crush apples into cider, to pickle and preserve the many foods they would serve. I'm convinced we're heading back towards their time. Why do you say that, Rubberhead? Well, with today's shortages with conservation recycling and interest in the environment we're all beginning to live more like the early immigrants well that's the way it was folks <laughs> Why don't you make a new friend make a new friend make a new friend today why don't you make a new friend make a new friend make a new friend today my name is Karen my grandpa gave me a pet crab and my friend Jan came over to see it What does he eat? Something like little cornflakes. Do you put milk and sugar on? No, it's just little flakes that float on the water. Hello, Tadayima. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, John. Taking your shoes off. He always does that. What for? Do his feet hurt? I don't think so. Where did he come from? Japan. Maybe they don't have shoes in Japan. How are you? Hello. Hi. Jan said something funny today. Well, what did she say? She saw Grandpa take off his shoes, and she said that must be what Japanese people do. That's right. You should do it, too. It's more polite. She said they didn't wear shoes in Japan. Where did she learn that? In Japan, everybody wears shoes, but they take them off when they go inside. It's... A custom, like shaking hands when you greet someone. Grandpa does it because he learned to do it when he was little. There's nothing strange about that. We have Japanese customs in our family, like eating with chopsticks or eating a big breakfast on New Year's Day. You mean we're different from other people? Not really. Every family has its own customs that they've learned from their parents and grandparents. I'm sure Jan's family does, too. Let's go play with the crab. Did you ever put him in the bathtub? I don't think so. I don't feel too good today. Do you have a stomach cake? I think so. Well, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you get better. Goodbye. Hi, Grandpa. 
All right, Carolyn. Why do you take off your shoes? Well, let me explain. When I was a little boy in Japan, we live in a house different from these houses. Instead of door and the windows, we had shoji. It worked just like a sliding door, except that shoji is covered by thin white papers. We did not have carpet like here in America. Most of the floor space is covered with tatami. Tatami is made from tuli grass woven together. We sat on the cushion on the tatami floor like this and ate on a little table about this high. We used to sleep on mattress on tatami. During the day, we fold the mattress, put it away. Working on the tatami with a shoe on, it would break. Inside the house is very clean because we never run around with a shoe on. So, it's a habit for me to take my shoe off. <laughs> now you understand, Carrie? Yes. Hi, Grandpa. Hi, Carolyn. Grandpa, is it true that you used to live in a paper house and sleep on grass? Well, something like that. Do you want to see some pictures? Yeah! yeah. I'll be there in a minute. No, we're not through. One cup plus three tablespoons of cold water, too. One good-sized strainer, one measuring cup, and one large spoon and a serving dish to serve it up. One heavy pot with a well-fitting top. Now we're ready to go till we're ready to stop. Put one cup of uncooked rice in the strainer. Do not use instant that Couldn't be plainer. Wash the rice, put it in the heavy pot, and add all. I said all the cold water you had. Let it all stand at least half an hour to give it old-fashioned good food power. Now we are ready to cook, and it's a good notion to get someone older to help with the potion. Working around the stove just can't be beat when there's someone bigger to help with the heat. Ah! Now it's time to turn the okome, that's uncooked rice, into gohan, and that's something nice. Put the lid on the pot, turn the heat on high, until the water comes to a rolling boil. Then turn the heat down, but don't lift the cover and leave it alone. I said leave it alone for 15 minutes. Now take the pot with the rice off the stove and dig right into your rice treasure trove. Monosugoku oishi. Monosugoku oishi. In Japanese, that means it's so tasty. One thing about being a nose, you never know what you're going to smell next. Mm -hmm. I do love the smell of garlic bread. Mm -hmm. Look, garlic smells the worst. Here, have a sniff of this fresh peanut butter ice cream to clear your head. Peanut butter? I can't stand the smell of peanut butter. All I can say is you're missing a good smell. You're the one who's missing something. You sure you don't have a stuffed nose? A little head cold, maybe? Or something like that, I don't really know. Well, guys, not all noses like the same smells. It depends on what you're used to. And the same goes for the way people smell. 
Smell is another way that each person is an original. We all have a personal body odor, and that's what we're used to. So other people's odors sometimes seem strange to us. One reason for these differences in smell comes from the number of sweat glands we have. Sweat glands are tiny holes in the skin which allow water inside to reach the outside and cool us when we're too hot. Some of us have more of these sweat glands and so we sweat more freely. Another difference comes from the food we eat. Foods with strong smells can add their odors to the sweat that comes from our skin. Part of the fun of eating different foods is the many different smells they have. And part of the fun of having many different kinds of people in the world is that they have a variety of smells too. Black is beautiful. White is white. Black. White. Hold it, you guys. My daddy told me this black-white business is like seasoning food. We need both, salt and pepper. Welcome to Vegetable. 